So our first game is Glass Masquerade 2 Illusions. Welcome to Glass Masquerade Sequel, an artistic puzzle game inspired by stained glass artisans and wonderland depictions of the 20th century. You'll need to combine glass pieces to solve every riddle and free yourself from a tangled dream. I don't know, kind of looks cool. It's very different. Very different type of artwork. The combination theory of addition. Even if the hunter and the hunted change places, they will still be hunted. And the hunter, remember this, if you ever want to turn everything inside out. I don't know, it just looks, I mean, it's a puzzle game. So, they're all puzzle pieces. That looks kind of creepy. So, props to creepy clown stuff. Um, and this is, yeah, this is some weird, weird artwork. <clears throat> Looks like they got some uh, difficulty stuff down there. A crooked mile. You can head straight for your goal or go in a certain direction, stand in place or wander around in circles, but whatever you do, know what you're doing. I mean, I like the artwork. It looks it looks good. This looks... Um, these are all the puzzle pieces, I'm guessing. I don't know what the deal is with the circular layers, but... Like, you just slowly build the puzzle. Obviously looks a little bit more complicated than normal because of the weird puzzle pieces. Got a double click thing going on, I don't know why. Um, indirectly direct. If you take it upon yourself to write a fairy tale, you have to write about a villain too. After all, if the hero fails to fell his foe, the story will be completely different. I don't know if these are tooltips or like supposed to be describing the image that you've unlocked. It's kind of just nonsense. Again, the artwork looks sweet though. Yep. That's a puzzle. Miracle Monster Monstrosity. The only picture you have of the world is the one you paint yourself. The question is whether or not you, you're sparing the paint. Yeah, I think those are supposed to be like deep philosophical, like holy shit moments. But, you know. February 27th, 2019 is when it comes out. That is tomorrow. If you're interested, it's a sequel. So, I guess if you've played the first one, you might enjoy the second one. It's by Onyx Loot, who have just made this game and the previous Glass Masquerade with additional DLCs. So you know what their life is about. It's about making puzzle games. If you like it, you're into puzzles. All right. Our next one is tech support error unknown. Things are not what they seem at your tech support specialist job. While resolving customer support issues, you soon find yourself in the middle of a conspiracy. Will you side with your employer? Join a rogue hacktivist group bent on destroying them, or assist the police, or stand alone. Let's get some uh, interesting visuals. Kind of just looks like a one of those point-and-click games.
Also kind of seems like a work simulator. Anyways, comes out tomorrow, February 27th. <clears throat> so, you know, if you're into playing tech support and you want to believe you're a hacktivist, then, um, yeah, I guess that's what that game is about. <clears throat> Entering in a random security code. Uh, what is with this double click on this? I jumped like. All these screenshots. <clears throat> so they're chatting, they're tracking someone with GPS. They're pretending to change a password via a terminal. There's a fake in game help assistant. This is like a, a help queue line for tickets and tech support. That sounds uh who would like who would want to play a game centered around that? Not me. I guess that I guess that if that's your thing, there's a free demo. Try it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna say hard pass for me. Made by Dragon Slumber. Who is known for such games as Airy Light, Core, Astral Traveler? <clears throat> oh man, we gotta check out this horse armor. Yeah, you can tell what this game company is about. They're into making horse armor. Because it was a joke at one point in time, because Skyrim came out with horse armor DLC. So, so did this game company. Great job, guys. We're going to move on to the next one. Next game is called Good Company, a corporate machinery simulator. In Good Company, you pursue your dream of being a hands-on tycoon. Start small in your garage, design unique high-tech goods, and optimize production, logistics, and research, while you lead your enterprise to global success. I'm liking the animation. Animation looks good. Got this 2.5D top-down kind of feel. kind of an, an adorable <clears throat> claymation type animation for the characters Ooh, but we're, we're right back to like working simulator this is definitely not my job I mean, I wonder if you can build custom machines, like what's, or is it just optimization? Okay, there's some robots. Kind of looks interesting. Oh no, the, the graphs are going up. We're making all this money. We're expanding. I don't know. I guess, you know, is that Charles Jam? What do y'all think? I think it's weird. <laughs> Some weird color palettes there. Uh, Name your company, Carrots. Look at that icon creator, amazing. This is an early access game too, which I kind of roll my eyes at. This interface looks impressive, right? Like they've got a three-dimensional model, they're building alarm clocks, I guess. Got, you know, additional modules with beepers. Talking about audio quality prop, you know, Processing power, like it's it's giving you all these additional features in order to make the best alarm clock possible. 
you know, I can, I can see the potential. I just wonder if it's boring. But yeah, good company. An early access game that's available in the second quarter of 2019. I fucking hate it when companies do this. No one knows when this is. Like, you couldn't just, like, give, like, an arbitrary estimated release date of, yeah, we think we'll be out by March. No, 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 no. Because then when March comes and goes, everybody's pissed. So, Q2 2019. <laughs> so look for it, guys. Quarter, second quarter of 2019. Alright. <clears throat> oh, this is some anime stuff if I've ever seen it. If my heart had wings, flight diary. Well, if my heart had wings, flight diary is technically a fan disc for if my heart had wings. It includes six stories, including the prologue and epilogue to the main story, and acts as a sequel to the original. Okay, but what is your game about? I don't know what If My Heart Had Wings is. So far, I know it's anime. They're probably in high school. Um, maybe architectural. A jet? It's a plane? A bunch of planes. They're in an aerospace academy? Oh, is this for real? Okay. So it's it's about It's about an anime that takes place at a aerospace academy. Okay. They're really into windmills. Is green green energy, you know. It does look like. A... Is it a harem of women? Is it a dating sim? Coming around to Steam this winter. It's a visual novel. So you know ambiguity. The visual novel. Is it like one of those visual novel? Adult visual novel? Or is it just like I'm wasting my time visual novel? See, like there's mm, there's some provocativeness there. It looks like it's a, a I'm wasting my time visual novel. <laughs> oh man, I say that and then the first thing it has to state is all characters appearing in this game are over 18 years old. So, you know, that's a disclaimer for there's fucking nudity and they look like children, but they swear they're 18 years old. Um, the developers describe the content like this. While there are hints and sex jokes at this game, oh, there are no depiction of any sexual acts. Oh, nope, so complete reversal on what I said. It's a it's a wasting your time game with euphemisms. Available February 2019. Well, there's not very many days of February left, so you better hurry up and publish this, you know, much needed visual novel sequel to the, you know, stunning If My Heart Had Wings original game. We're all dying to know what happened to the character. All right, our next game is The First Men. A real-time 4X strategy in a fantasy world. Customize your Adam and Eve. Go head-to-head -head with other races while conducting diplomacy, raging war, and advancing The First Men. Well, I saw a severed dragon head. Some highly stylized building. Square.
Cool. More dragon. Art artwork looks fairly decent. Um, there was way too many cuts in that fucking trailer, though. Yep, I I get it's a dragon. Do you get that? There's a dragon. It's very stylized. I like the artwork. It's cool. Um, that looks a little janky. That looks like Warcraft Three crap. Severed head, cool. Mmm, not so hot on this other artwork. It's very tiny. Yeah, things are very small in this. Available when it's ready. Oof. Guys. Come on. Why do you even put up a Steam page? The skies and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation, after which they have cloven asunder, going through a phase when they are smoke-like, after they simultaneously came into shape to live in. Six eras have passed. The world and the cosmos have been created, and the creatures that walk, swim, crawl, and fly rise on the face of the earth from water. The angels and the sun, moon, and stars started to dwell in the universe. The rain and torrents have been poured down, and the soil is broken up to bring forth the corn, the grapes, and other vegetation. The olive and the palm, the fruit trees and the grass. The earth is held to be inhabited by several other creatures before that special act of creation. The first men. So whoever wrote that, you know, clearly knows what they're doing. That's a very badass fucking intro. Um, it's unfortunate that that's not in the game trailer and um, <clears throat> that that's not the description. Because um, damn, like, that's good. That's real good. You know, and then they just actually describe what the game's about, which is exactly what you should do. I hate these pictures, though. I've seen a lot of this stuff where it's just like, I've seen content of your game. I don't need, like, artwork that you used to originally try to sell the game. I now know what it looks like, so whatever promo shit this was, you know, we're done here. We don't need this. But yeah, um, great great writing for these two fucking paragraphs. Great job, game. Um, who is this by? It's by Para Games. I guess they're an indie game dev. Oh, they've actually done other games. I'm surprised. Um, they did a single other game called Overfall. Looks like it might have been done in the exact same um, engine. But yeah. Reviews mostly positive. Uh, some people say it's shallow. Well, you know. You're into that kind of animation. <clears throat> Our next game, Eve of Souls Static Pod. This may be from a non-English developer, judging by the Asian characters. Uh, let's get into it. A hardcore pixel horror game with a twist. Guide our lovely maiden through the space filled with horror, where you will find yourself emerged in a storyline. Maybe you have become her, or she becoming you. Eve of Souls, Static Pod. It's good writing. Um, some very selective color palette. You can see they like blue and white a little too much. Um, 
then they're just highlighting other things with red. This definitely looks like it was made in like RPG Maker though. And I I hate games made in RPG Maker. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just I'm I'm so over like the Game Boy S games in terms of like graphic styles and stuff like that. And there's there's even games that like really, really try to hide it. But then all of a sudden you like get into the actual game 20 minutes later and it's like, oh yeah, here it is. It's a fucking top-down RPG from fucking RPG Maker. I'm sure they put an immense amount of effort into it. I'm just, oof, I'm so done with RPG Maker S games. Let's look at the developer. Light Tea Fish Studio. Uh, it looks like they make anime games. Yep. So they know what their life is about. Our next game is Forager. A highly popular and quirky indie game that you want to actively keep playing. Okay, they just threw a quote in for the description, and they're not telling me who said it. Who said that quote? The quote is, indie game that you want to actively keep playing. Who said it? Did you say it? <laughs> Explore, craft, gather, and manage resources. Find secrets and build your base out of nothing. Buy land to explore and expand. Uh, this this person needs help um, advertising and selling their game. They need a complete rewrite of the basic introduction to the game. Um, they're making up fake quotes about their game and putting it in the description. That's a fucking red flag. The publisher is Humble Bundle. I didn't even know Humble Bundle was a publisher. Um, Forger is a 2D open world game inspired by exploration, farming, and crafting games. Such as, no, 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 don't, don't name other games in your game to let people know that if you like other games like these, they might like your game. No. Terrible selling point. Because... You know what's better than your game? The games that you're listing. <clears throat> Gather, collect, and manage resources. That sounds that sounds exciting, guys. Um, craft useful items and structure. Oh man, you're just throwing me for a loop. Build and grow a base out of nothing. Do you, do you actually mean out of nothing? Or do I have to use the materials that I gathered in order to construct them? Probably the latter, huh? Level up and learn new skills, abilities, and blueprints. Oh, man. You're really just throwing us for a fucking loop here. Solve puzzles, find secrets, and raid dungeons. <clears throat> well, raid dungeons sounds, you know, sounds nice. I would not expect raid dungeons to be in your game, but here they are. Achieve anything you want. Well, that's a fucking statement. The choice is yours. You set your own goals to work towards. Oh. So you mean there's, like, no storyline, and there's no, like, main quest, and you don't... It's just a giant fucking sandbox. Hmm. Start small and improve your base. Skills, equipment... Network of friends and enemies, and build your future as you see fit. You can play vor Forager in a very variety, very varied array of playstyles. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. Okay, again, with like. What? 
the fuck? Like, if you're trying to show us stuff like this, if this is like what the gameplay is about, don't you think that should be up here? Like, don't you think it should be multiple trailers or inside your original trailer? If like that's, if this is what it's all about is, hey, you can become a gatherer or a farmer or a merchant or an adventurer or a builder. Like, if that's what it's about, right? And you want to show all of this, do that up here. Most people aren't going to expand to see all of this stuff, let alone read all of it. Uh, man. I, I just say they need help. They need help marketing their game. It's obviously not their high point. It's probably why they went to Humble Bundle. Um, let's look at Hot Frog. Yep, it's their first game. I can't blame them. I won't blame them. It's just rough. Because Humble Bundle's not doing you any favors. Sure, they gave you financial support for the game, but they're obviously not helping you out with the marketing end, which you desperately need. Our next game is Flashback. Flashback, the hit action-adventure game with over 2.2 million units sold, is back. After fleeing from a spaceship but stripped of all memory, the young scientist Conrad B. Hart awakens on a Titan, a colonized moon of the planet Saturn. His enemies and kidnappers are snapped, are snapping at his heels. He must find a way back to Earth, defending himself against the dangers he encountered and unraveling an insidious extraterrestrial plot that threatens the planet. Flashback. I mean, I don't know when this game came out, but... That shit looks old... It's their 25th anniversary. Well, that explains a lot. It doesn't look like an HD remake. Like, it just... It just looks like... I say that. I don't know what the original one looks like, but I'm not impressed by the graphics if this is quote-unquote updated. Developer Paul. Paul is just a, a dude, a bro... Okay. What is subject 13? Is this just Paul's individual game? Yep, this is just Paul's individual game. People are mixed about Paul's game. A case in wasted potential. The story is hollow. Good store and graphics, but too buggy. Nonsensical puzzles. Well, we know how Steam feels about you. Sorry, Paul. We're going to go on to our next game called Ape Out. wonder what it's about. Apes? Ape Out is a wildly intense, colorfully stylized smash em up about primal escape, rhythmic violence, and... Frantic Jazz. Oh. Build up nearly unstoppable momentum and use your captors as both weapons and shields to crush everyone on your procedurally generated path to freedom. So, it's about an ape who goes ape, murders people, and uses their bodies as shields while he mows them down with machine guns. You know, I'm not going to lie, in terms of a concept, that sounds pretty badass. Um, I don't know about highly stylized. They say colorfully stylized. I mean, they're selective on the colors, that's for sure. They're trying. It's an interesting concept. 
the ape gets super violent, like really violent. Mm, good mature content description. Um, it is by a bunch of bros. Uh, I wish they would come up with a fucking name of their company, but people like that are just too busy trying to sell their individual games that they're attached to. This person made Gris? No. They were a part of a developer studio. That See, that's why that's dumb. <sighs> All right. Let's go on to some other ones. I'm just clicking through the new upcoming most popular um, hot garbage stuff. Thimble. Thimble is a single player comic book action adventure set in the final winter before Ragnarok. The Thimble Winter. You play as an old berserk traveling to Jotunheim to fulfill his destiny, battling trolls and J Jotuns to reclaim an ancient artifact that just might save Migard. Hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing that was supposed to be like their Dark Souls moment or something where it's like, oh, holy shit, this guy's enormous. But the animation just looks silly. It's it's hard not to make giant bulking monstrosities not just look like giant derp monsters. Because it doesn't matter how you scale it, they're just they look slow and ridiculous. And when they're fast paced, they look cartoonish. I wouldn't say I like the graphics, but I don't hate the graphics. It's whatever engine they're using. I guess it's okay. I feel like a lot of people are trying to just get away from doing lots of detail. So it, it doesn't really look like there's faces. But oh, they've got beards and they've got hats. They've got um, things that accessorize. And, you know, it's different. Thimble combines intense Viking battles with a deep story that unfolds through in-game comics to bring the frozen world of the Norse sagas to life. Immerse yourself in the blistering rent winter preceding Ragnarok, the Fimble Winter. They really like to like do that. They like to say the name of the game. Use the timeline tree at any point to explore the decisions that changed your fate. Oh, that's some like um is the tree called Awaya? Awaya? I don't know. It's in fucking sci-fi movie, Blue People Avatar. Um, it's also in Final Fantasy games with Lightning Returns. Um, yeah, I guess that's just Norse, North, Norse mythology. It's not terrible. I guess it's interesting. For people who are interested in that historic era, I'm not really much of a fan. I don't think it's really selling me on any point. It really is trying to drive home that it's like comic book driven. I'm not really sure why. <clears throat> Our next game is Unlucky 7. Unlucky 7 will take you on a spacewalk and tell you a story about love, hate, and craving for human flesh. This is a fucking furry game. Yep. <clears throat> this is... Here we are. One of the most anticipated games. And it's just... It's about anthropomorphic animals. Fucking each other. I say that, maybe not. I mean, he's just dragging a dead body around. 
Maybe it's supposed to be comical. This worries me, though. Tell me about this game. Ellen's friend always remembered to celebrate special occasions. Instead of attending Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, they go to a birthday party in a luxury motel. Unfortunately, the owner just ate a delicious human liver sausage, and the appetite comes with eating. The party of their life becomes a party of death. Experience the thrill of adventure through the beautiful pixel-realistic pixel world where you eat and your choices decide the fate of your friends. Meet the hidden goals and desires of each character and jeer as their plans are ruined. Unlucky Seven will take you on a space... Okay. What... The game may contain content not appropriate for all ages or may not be appropriate for viewing at work. Frequent violence or gore, general mature content. I'm so confused. So it's... Is it like Clue? Is it like the space version of Clue with animals? Where you're trying to figure out who... Poisoned the human liver sausage? And everybody's a suspect? This is... This is an odd concept. And the fact that it's futuristic furries is just even fucking weirder. Puzzling dream. Right to click on your stuff. He's made fishing games. <laughs> okay, I mean, everything else looks relatively normal. I guess I was quick to judge. Woods, that what? Ultimate summer boat. I think it's they're one of those developers that they they know that they don't sell the content that people want, so maybe they're trying to like trick you into like, oh yeah, like you'd have uh, lots of fun with these. All right. It's just a boat game, though. Like, I don't even know what to say about this developer. It seems like, it seems like a dad, um, a dad game developer. Is what it seems like. Because you got, like, Ultimate Fishing Simulator, Pro Fishing Simulator. You got a mech that shows that they're around in the 1980s. professor farm expert I tried to do like a farm knockoff simulator earthworms from like earthworm gym I don't know it's weird all right next game end state end state is a turn-based tactics game where you manage a mercenary company tracking down a terrorist in a war-torn country Hire, gear up, and gain experience for your mercenaries. Take on rebels, criminal gangs, do side contracts, and explore Prokovia.
I was supposed to be impressed by that, but it just looks like you shot a guy. Hmm. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Graphics look alright. Let's get up in here. Oh, they're doing the fucking XCOM turn based thing. That explains this a little bit more. We got these outcomes. Man, this looks just. <laughs> Iron Sight, is this your first game? Of course it is. Of course it is. You were like, you know what kids like? They like that XCOM. What if it wasn't in space or future, and it was just like here, and normal? But they were in Brokovia. I don't know. I've I've seen cameras like this before. Like this, I guess it looks cinematic to some people. Anyways, Celestian Tales: Realms Beyond. An RPG with turn-based combat and a story of questionable morals. Seen through multiple perspectives. Well, shit, I guess just take all my money right now. You told me everything I want to know about the game. I know the plot, the characters, the scene, the setting. Oh, wait, you didn't tell me fucking any of that. You told me it was an RPG game. Graphics look legit. See, now, if this was made with, like, RPG Simulator, or whatever the fuck it's called, RPG Maker, I'd be impressed. Because it looks so different. It also looks like it's not made for a PC. It kind of looks like it's made for a console. Their artwork is passable. Like, these characters don't look amazing. They don't look terrible. They just... It almost... Like, everything kind of seems faded. It almost looks like... Um, they just need, like, some extra strokes, some extra highlights, shadows. It just... It definitely looks... Looks like the, the gamma's turned up real high or something. Alright. Here we go. Celestian Tales Realms Beyond is a beautifully hand-painted role-playing game that tells a story of questionable morals seen through multiple perspectives. Here you play as a group of companions, knights sworn to serve and protect their hair of their noble house, in their struggle to survive a world where one's true enemies are often their closest allies. Wow. Explore a vibrant, colorful world and speak, trade, and argue with hundreds of its unique inhabitants. With detailed sprites crafted pixel by pixel, frame by frame, Celestian Tales takes no compromise in taking classical methods to new heights. Fully illustrated characters with emotional facial expressions further immerse you into the game's thought-provoking dialogues. There is no terrible evil to slay, no force of true good in play. Celestian Tales is a story of humanity taking shape in a fantasy world of people pitted against people 
and clashing ideals and alignments. Huh. Them saying that it's all hand painted, I, I guess might explain the, the style. Like the characters, yeah. Maybe made with water paint. I don't know. Like, are they trying to say, like, these buildings are all hand painted too? These tiles are all hand painted. This door is hand painted. I was gonna say, I'll be honest, just because of like stuff like this where you can see a distinct line, assume it's digital. <clears throat> Use divine magic. What could go wrong? I don't know, maybe it's not sharp. Maybe that's the deal. Like, <clears throat> you can see how this is darker and it's sort of filled in, but it, it still doesn't pop like it should. Like, everything just feels faded. Like, I feel like these, these pop. This looks good. The visual ones where you've got those black stroke outlines. Everything else is just like see, especially here, like maybe it's I don't know what to focus on. Like <clears throat> really would want some outlining here. Specifically so I could tell the difference between rock. I mean, I can obviously tell the difference from the color and stuff, but it just doesn't pop, it doesn't protrude, it doesn't look three-dimensional. I'm really harping on this person's artwork for no fucking <laughs> It's because they touted it. It's because they were like, this is the sole reason of uh, buying this game. Apparently it's their ongoing series of Celestial Tales, though, so good for them. Our next game is Fey Tactics. Fey Tactics follow a young magical user named Peony on her journey across a vibrant world full of mystery and danger. Summon allies, cast spells, and befriend a motley crew of characters as you dive into the growing conflicts between man and magical beings. Miss Fey. Fey Tactics. Hmm. I feel like this is something <clears throat> you could play on a handheld. I don't think I should be playing it on a PC. It actually looks like a port. That's what I would say. Looks like... <clears throat> it looks like something that was on a Nintendo DS. A Game Boy. It's got controller support. No surprise there. Oh man, this is a number another humble bundle publisher. Starting to wonder about Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle. I don't know. Apparently they make made games before. Cultist Simulator. Apparently they've been incredibly successful. <clears throat> It's 
This doesn't look doesn't look PC worthy. But props to them, they're doing success. Let's go on to another one. Let's focus this to games. I'll need no DLC. And open up a few more. All right. Playerless One Button Adventure. Discover Playerless, the game set in another game. Your character has become self aware. You can only use one button to play. The AI has formed a sect, and the game engine is a physical mechanism. It'll be fun. I don't know, man. I mean, I get that it's like meta. It should be like, ah, ah, ah. isn't it cute and adorable? And I'm just like, no, it's not. It's like everybody's trying to make a Stanley pair. No. And one button to play, like, what? You're just not even trying to build features then. PGA 2018 Best Indie Game Award nomination. Nomination. <laughs> it's not an award, it's a nomination. Oh, look, you've never made a game before. Prize. Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator. Become a true stick and rudder pilot and master the backcountry in Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator. With no autopilot, no de-icing systems, little navigation aids, and limited instruments. Do you have what it takes to become the ultimate bush pilot? Dead Stick Bush Flight Simulator. Add it to your wish list today. Only on Steam. Well, it's a um, early access game, so first off, fuck them. Um, it's a fucking flight simulator. If you're into it, I guess you're into it. Uh, deliver cargo as a bush pilot? I don't know what a bush pilot is, so... I guess this game isn't for me, because they're not going to tell me what a bush pilot is. Um, perform walk-arounds and pre-flight checks and manually load and unload cargo. Oof. That just seems like so much fun. So realistic. This work simulator. Ah, let's see if they made any other games. Remex? Not Remix, but Remex? Nope, that's their... Their lone and only game. Best of luck to y'all with Dead Stick. Hope it's successful. The Forgotten City is a time travel murder mystery in the mytho mythological city. Deep underground in an ancient Roman city, 26 trapped explorers lay dead because one of them broke a mysterious law. A portal leads back to the past, allowing you to change their fate or witness their deaths in a time loop for the rest of eternity. Graphics look all right. Um, they look better than, I mean, they look good. Let's 
seems like there's some interesting concepts. They're gonna turn to gold if they fuck up. 26 trapped explorers just seems like, you know, you gotta save the 26 people and that's the end of the game. Um... This is weird. I don't, like... Why don't they have skin? Oh no, you've done it now, you've turned me into gold. I don't know, it's kind of an interesting concept. Um, I worry that it's just like a walking simulator in which you're just walking around and listening to people. I mean, there was, there was some action where that guy was getting messed up, but uh, a lot of that stuff can just be cutscenes. I think this is a mod. Lily says, enjoying the mod. The Forgotten City retains all the elements you know and love while improving every aspect and adding plenty of surprises. Walk the streets of a brand new city, get to know reimagined characters, sink into original lore, and fresh twists and endings. Enjoy added combat and wall climbing mechanics. An all-new orchestral score, professional voice acting, and motion capture animation. Note, this game is about the human condition for adults who enjoy figuring things out about themselves. Request, please add this game to your wish list. <laughs> That's kind of adorable. Um, I don't understand about it being a mod. The Forgotten City is a reimagining of the critically acclaimed mod downloaded by more than 1.7 million gamers. The first mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award? I don't understand. They're saying it's a mod. Just nod and agree. Contraptionist Parkour. Contraptionist Parkour is a physics-based building game in which you build most varied contraptions to solve the most diverse types of puzzles. Win dozens of levels with different types of obstacles. Design the best machine for each challenge using a giant collection of blocks with different functionalities. Well, looks like it's for all those engineers out there trying to make something out of nothing. <laughs> I don't, ah, there's another game like this that I remember playing as a demo. And I mean... It it kind of seems like something for kids, not to like rain on anybody's parade, but it's obviously like a great um, learning aspect. You can learn about physics, gears, torques, like all that jazz. There's 40 different blocks, including wheels, motors, pistons, springs, decoupler, grabber, steerable, Linear stage, cannon, sword, etc. Um, 30 different levels with different obstacles and a sandbox level. Uh, JCP Games. Their first game. Best of luck to them. Going on to Agent A, a puzzle in disguise. A suave secret agent adventure game. Your mission, 
should you choose to accept, is to infiltrate enemy spy Ruby La Rogue's secret hideaway and put a stop to her evil plan. Kinda looks like a point and click. Really looks like a point and click now. Um, it's not bad artwork wise. That's interesting. Some good animation. <laughs> oh, the moon logic. Need to adjust these plants in order to open a hidden door that I don't know about. It's shown me so much animation. I'm I'm almost wondering if I'm seeing the whole entire game in front of my eyes. Like I said, artwork's pretty solid. Uh, this is not solid. This is this is janky artwork. What's going on there? Great. This is garbage. This is great. Oh, there's some weird like low quality stuff going. I mean, uh, the scenes and everything else look good, but like she's she looks significantly like a lower quality than. Everything else. This guy looks great. What is, let's see, like, what is that? Is that like a stylistic thing? That, that's like a paper torn effect or whatever. None of that's here. This looks great. Stylish 1960s inspired art. Hmm. Maybe they're taking the creative license a little too far. From Yak and Co. You know. They're renowned for their yaks and company. Moving on to the next one. Pandemic Express. In Pandemic Express, a group of human players try to outrun the infected. Zombies need to infect all human players who are trying to escape on a train. Think zombie mod set in a large open world with vehicles. That is a garbage description of your game. <sighs> there are some people that desperately need help in their advertisement. And what's worse is I see stuff all the time where it's like they have publishers. And I really question what their definition of a publisher is. Now this one, for example, the developer says Tall Boy's Tiny Build. But then it also says Tiny Build is the publisher. So they're probably owned by them or it's the same company or whatever, but mm, it just Tiny Build is your publisher. And it's 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 not you. <laughs> it's not the actual game development company. They need you to rewrite this. You need you need help for advertising your game. You are clearly struggling because you say, think zombie mod set in large open world with vehicles. Like, that is not a lovely description for your game. Um, I don't know if you're, is, is zombie mod like an actual game? Are you just saying the most generic basic shit? Think about a zombie mod and then think about it being in an open world and then think about vehicles and then you have my game. And again, you're just, that's not, that's not the way you want to sell it. Got like a fucking uh, three and a half minute trailer showing, picking people up, running away from zombies, hopefully some combat, beat, beating people up. Um, that's what you want to show. That's what you want to talk about. You got somewhat realistic light reflections, cars coming around the corner. There's all zombies 
Do all of the zombies have headphones on? <laughs> they sure do. Some weird parkouring. I need to uh, decrease the gravity a little bit. Uh, oh, that looks goofy. Man. Come on. Oh, see, like that. That's not good. It's like ragdoll your car. Because there's no weight in your. What was that? When people blow up, it blows up into buildings. Okay. All right, guy. Well, we can say a lot about your game. <laughs> and again, when they talk about their game, we've played a lot of zombie escape style mods and wanted to make something standalone on a larger scale. Up to 30 players spawn in a large world. One of them gets randomly infected and has to spread the infection, turning everyone into a zombie. Human players desperately try to escape on a train through an onslaught of what seems like an endless zombie horde. So, first off, you have to have 30 people playing your game in order to have a single match. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. And again, you just... Uh, you're, you're talking about how you like to play zombie escape style mods. Uh, don't say that in your about your game section. Talk about your game. Don't, don't make me want to skip over large swaths of your text in order to figure out what the game is about in your about game section. The first standalone zombie mod on a massive scale? What are y'all talking about? That That's just inherently wrong. Like, no. No. And why are you calling it a mod? You're a game. Are people getting confused about the words mods and games? Are they using someone else's game and this is a mod? Again, imagine a CS zombie mod infused with the DNA of a large-scale open-world shooter. Like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Just describe your game without talking about other games. Like, just... That's basic. Well, these guys aren't going to win any... Any awards. Best of luck to them. Next game is Warlocks 2 God Slayers. Challenge the vile gods and dethrone them in this action RPG, mixing retro aesthetics with modern gameplay. Team up with up to four friends in an online and local co op. Choose from a cast of five powerful warlocks. Wow. Um, it's a multiplayer RPG game in which you can choose from different warlocks. Yeah, they are right about mixing weird retro aesthetics. Like, I got a flash of one game and now I'm looking at a different one. This looks like this would be extremely hard to tell the difference between players. If you're playing with four other players. And what part of you is a warlock? Like... None of this looks warlockish. I mean, there's a totem. That's not anything to do with a warlock. Well, there you go. That's Warlock 2 God Slayers, available in the first quarter of 2019.
whatever the fuck that is. Oh, it's it's apparently a humorous action RPG game. We forgot to mention it was funny. It's a fresh hack and slack, uh, hack and slack, hack and slash experience, and they swear they have awesome pixel art with hand drawn animation. Why does it matter that it's hand drawn? The developers describe the content like crude humor, fantasy violence, mild blood, and use of tobacco. Oh man, we gotta warn the kids about the tobacco. Frozen District. Oh, they made Warlocks for Shadows. I'm assuming that's Warlock 1. I had mixed reviews. I'll be damned. They're going to make a sequel. <laughs> Do not buy this game. Devs dropped it completely. Multiplayer still doesn't work. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> Utter jobbies. It's not a bad game. It's just not worthy of the fucking $14 price tag that's all right next game drift 19 if you love cars noise of the engine and drifting as much as we do there is no doubt this game is for you you build your car, train your skills, and take part in the world championship to beat other drivers. Drift 19 is the first and only serious drifting simulator. You love cars. This game's for you. Yeah, like, I hate it when they say it's the first. Like, you know they're lying, first off. They're going to try to put all kinds of fucking caveats on it. Like, oh, well, this is the uh, first game that's solely about drifting. There's no other game that's just about drifting. Like, okay, you're a racing game. You have drifting. There's been a bunch of other racing games with drifting. That's that's it. That's the end of story. You're not coming up with a unique concept. You know, if you want to say it's all about drifting, that's fine. But you're not the first and only serious drifting simulator like oh well there were some funny ones they weren't serious though they were jokes come on um also i can't help but notice this is available coming soon you've got a bunch of screenshots and there's no video what's up with that huh you have a publisher called playway sa I'm assuming you're owned by them because ECC Games SA, you know, SA. Playway SA. They've um, published a considerable amount of games. Um, they should let you know that you need to have a video of your game in your Steam store. And you should probably say something besides if you love cars, you'll buy this game or like this game or... If you love the noise of the engine and drifting as much as you do, you'll love this game. Um, these are terrible banners. These can be thrown in the garbage. And then you can actually write an actual description about what your game's about. I really wonder what your publisher is doing for you. What other games did y'all make? Darkest Hunters. Remember, it's the live of a hunter you've become, only you are able to defeat the essence of evil. I mean, that doesn't sound like appropriate English. I, I think they mean life. Again, same publisher. Celebrating a hundred years of Polish independence. N 
they're they're from Poland. <laughs> Good for them. I'm sure they're having a tough time in Poland. Dead or Alive 6. Now we're getting into something we all can enjoy. Dead or Alive 6 is a fast-paced 3D fighting simulator featuring stunning graphics, multi-tiered stages that create a truly entertaining, competitive experience. But they also do beach volleyball games. That's a bug. <laughs> um, you know, it's dead or alive. Check out these chicks beat the shit out of each other. Got some dudes in there too, but we know that's not why you're watching. Although they're all about equal opportunity, I guess. I don't even want to watch this entire trailer. Screenshots. Boob action. Boob action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's a fighting game. We swear it's a fighting game. See? He's getting water on him. He's getting blood knocked off. The boxes are getting destroyed. Yeah, see, it's a fighting game. Koei Tekakamo Games Co. Ltd. Also known for lots of anime garbage. Best of luck to them and their other anime garbage. Let's go on to the next page. No. Not what I wanted. Alright. Open up a few more pages. Dawn of Man. Command a settlement of ancient humans, guide them through the ages and their struggle for survival. Hunt, gather, craft tools, fight, research new texts, and face the challenges of the environment that will... Face the challenges of the environment will throw at you. You fucked up that sentence, goddamn y'all. March 1st. Go kill a woolly mammoth. Mm, this is a very boring trailer. Hey look, you can build a hut, and build a town, and grow crops. Look, there's children, and uh... Mammoths. Did we mention the woolly mammoths? Well, there's woolly mammoths. And you can you can hunt things and kill people and Jesus is born. <sighs> well, you know, you're into the woolly mammoths. There it is. Dawn of Man by Madruga Works. They made Planet Base, a sci-fi simulator. Man, they really changed things. Went from sci-fi to that. Next game, Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove. What in the fuck is this? This is a mashup of the very best features of the classical console games with a ton of freshy... Funky fresh improvement. What the fuck is this? We're just gonna close this. I don't, I don't know what that is. Business magnet. It's a tycoon business simulator where you can create all types of business. Cars, rockets, phones, tanks, trucks, airplanes, computers, and ships. Design, produce, market, and sell them. You can even run companies, multiple companies, at the same time. Well, 
Color me impressed. I'm not impressed actually. This just looks like a boring, boring, boring simulator. Where you plop down buildings and pretend to manage a company. Eternity, the last unicorn. Oh, I actually already did a video on this. This shit is fucking funny. Look at this. The unicorn. Farm and Fix 2020. A new farming simulator with three main unique features. Fix and service farm machines and vehicles. Fix and renovate farm buildings. Farm and harvest crops. Buy old destroyed farms and restore it and resell it for profit. Jesus, like what? What are these games? Why would I want to buy an old farm and restore them for profit? These are games for like 50 year olds. Why would I want to do any of this? Weird working simulator. And again, electric, electromechanic simulator. Um, we're going to repair electric games. A simulator game of electric equipment repair with a dark conspiracy twist. In the game, you'll be able to fix modern and retro electronic uh, devices like consoles, computers, mobile phones, and other electronic equipment. Why would I want to do this? This is a job. This is like a weird job simulator. Guard Duty. Guard Duty is a comedy adventure about loss and love. The end of the world. No, I'm just kidding. It's about love and loss. Um, experience an unforgettable story, but we're not going to tell you what the story is. And it spans across two different time periods. This fucking graphics are a bit garbage. Sick Chicken Studios. Um. Best of luck. It's your first game. I'm not impressed, though. Sojourn is a thought-provoking first-person puzzle game in which you transverse the parallel worlds of light and darkness in search of answers to the nature of reality. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash. You're going to tell me the nature of the universe and the meaning of life? Probably not. They're probably just going to show me a bunch of really cool retro animation. Scratch my head and go, hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I don't have... Of the patients. Um, it's available 2019. What is with this add to the wish list stuff? They're they're really trying to really trying to get you to do this. But yeah, I think that's gonna be our last game. Um we've been streaming for an hour and a half now, just talking about games. Um, this has basically been Steam Store narrated. If you're interested in the games that we were talking about, you can go to the popular upcoming section on the Steam Store. Go to see more upcoming releases. And we basically just talked about the first two pages of games that are coming out. Um, I'll be putting this video up on my YouTube. You can see this on Retro Chronicles. And I hope you all have a great day.